Hi all, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about a most important topic called executive service. How we can basically uh, submit a jobs uh, and also how we basically manage a, uh, threads uh, through executive service class. Uh, and also in my previous videos, I have uploaded like a lot more uh, concurrency concepts. Uh, if you missed the videos, I put the link in description. So please, please go and watch. So let's start the executive service class. So executive service interface in Java is a part of a concurrent little package, a way to simplify the execution of tasks in a asynchronous mode. It provides a higher abstraction over threads and it and it's basically used to manage a pool of threads uh, so efficiently. Uh, so sometimes uh, it, it is basically uh, we'll see right when we traditionally create a threads right. We don't we are not efficiently managing a threads. We can create a let's say n number of threads. But through executor service, uh, we can create a fixed number of threads or a certain threads where we can reuse the threads again and again. So we'll, we will have a better thread management, especially. And also, uh, it's a it simplifies the uh, submission of a asynchronous jobs. So the executor service handles a queue of tasks and executes them executes them uh, using a available threads in the pool. So some of the key concepts basically lifecycle management. The life cycle of executor service includes uh, creating, uh, using, and then shutting it down properly. We have some methods called shutdown uh, and also shut, uh, shutdown now as well. We'll see um, to release resources. So task submission and execution. Tasks can be submitted from uh, uh, execution in different ways. And the service manager, uh, they're executing users internal worker threads. So they're how to creating an executor service, right? There are several ways to create an executor service. But one common approach is to use the executor's utility class, which is already which is already defined for us. We don't need to create a, a separate executor. We need to create a separate object for executor service. We can reuse the uh, utility class which is developed by Java uh, for uh, which is called executors, which which provides uh, many uh, methods uh, and some of the most important factory methods are basically new cache thread pool, create a thread pool that create uh, creates a thread pool that creates new threads as needed but will reuse the previously constructed threads when they when when they are available so this is a crux is basically uh, it will create some some uh, uh, thread uh, some pool of threads so whenever uh, to to basically take a job from the main from the service layer uh, and also perform asynchronously whenever uh, threads are ideal right Ex existing threads we can keep reuse of the same threads again and again and second thing basically new fixed thread pool we pass the number of threads we want to create upfront itself creating a thread pool that reuses the fixed number of threads uh, uh, operating of a shared unbounded queue so here we defining a how many threads at max we can use and we can basically try to re, uh, reuse the threads uh, internally program will basically try to reuse the same number of threads uh, again and again and also if you want to if you want to have a single thread and perform in a sequential way we can have a new single thread executor create executor service that uses a single worker thread uh, operating of an unbounded queue. So for task submission, right? For a task submission, uh, we basically have two types of task submission for an executive service: we execute and submit. What exactly the execute and submit? As we discussed previously, of runnable and callable, execute nothing but a will, will basically takes the uh, runnable command, which is nothing but a we we, we we don't get any return object from that. Uh, task uh, takes a runnable object and executes it asynchronously, does not return any result. But if you want to have a result, right, you should use the submit method. Uh, su submit basically callable task or submit you can use the runnable task and also the result. So these data will be holded in the future. Uh, the one we discussed in the previous video, I'll put the link in the description, please go and watch. So these methods are more flexible, allowing submission of both callable and runnable tasks. Callable task allow returning a, returning a result. Uh, the submit method uh, returns a future object which can be used to retrieve the results of the task submission. So as we discussed the executor service types, we have cache thread pool, fixed thread pool and single thread pool executor. When it comes to uh, cache thread pool, right? So uh, this is basically ideal for applications that requires uh, many short lived asynchronous tasks, but the uh, threads that, uh, that have not uh, used for 60 seconds, right? Are terminated and removed from cache. For the most, uh, it will basically initialize some kind of threads uh, and it will keep on using the same threads, same threads again. If a thread is basically ideal for more than 60 seconds, it will basically remove from a cache. Whereas a fixed thread pool basically, uh, which is suitable for uh, applications which are basically parallel and a fixed number of tasks. 
it uses a only fixed number of tasks repetitively and single thread executor useful for task that needs to be executed sequentially in the same thread uh, so let's see the use cases uh, so asynchronous task execution right so offloading tasks that are independent and can be executed asynchronously improving application performance so these are two main important things to go for executor service and for resource management it's sometimes very hectic to manage the resources of a threading if we if we create a thread on our own so that's why we can delegate the, the creating a thread and managing the everything uh, to the executor service only um, so managing a large number of threads directly can lead to the resource exhaustions executor service manages a pool of threads for you and also a more robust uh, implementation internally so we can completely relying on the executor service concurrency control so simplifying a task execution ma management in a concurrent environment handling synchronization task e execution thread management so these are the simple use cases to go to the uh, to go to the executor service let's see the some of the examples So we have uh, executor service, right? We have executor service from concurrent package, uh, uh, executor service. Here we can get the executor, executor utility, which is also from the concurrent package only. Here we can basically give, uh, get the as many things all want. For example, here we have a new single thread pool executor. You can simply do executor dot, uh, for example, execute, right? Execute will make the runnable command. You can simply uh, perform uh, um, hello world and you can basically wait for the thread to be completed uh, you can basically shut down uh, and you can simply run right it will basically submit it will basically execute this hello world in asynchronous manner like you can also simulate uh, this one um, main thread let's run So you see main thread is running uh, already and this uh, executors are basically running asynchronously like. So this is basically we have a whenever we have a single thread pool executor. Let's have multiple things now. Uh, we have one more thing right submit job. So submit also take a runnable task and if you want to have a data uh, for example let's assume it's basically a callable right returning something uh, returning hello and you can basically hold the data in the future uh, future red string see simply you can perform uh, this one uh, uh, assert submit dot get and this is basically uh, handled in a, in a, in a try catch yeah if you execute this one it will just print the hello See main thread is going on and uh, this is the blocking operation uh, as we discussed previously in the, my previous video. We will basically like, submit this task asynchronously. So when it comes to shutdown right we have two things are there. One is basically executive service dot shutdown and uh, we have shutdown now. So what exactly shutdown now? Uh, so shutdown now basically will not accept any new threads, any new task. It will try to submit, it will try to shut down all the task once it is completed uh, as it, uh, depending on the duration. And for shutdown now basically uh, will stop the threads abruptly and returns the data like returns all the uh, all the threads. So this is the basically difference between the shutdown and shutdown now. Shutdown now simply won't accept the uh, new threads to be coming uh, to take a job and whatever task is already completed it will try to uh, keep wait until all the jobs are completed but shutdown now basically immediately it will interrupt all the existing threads and it will do the shutdown now it will basically exit from out exit from thing so now let's discuss about other uh, other many things are there in the executor service some are like uh, for example let's have a uh, fixed thread pool right for example i have 20 threads are there what you can simply do you can perform a for loop Find i equals to 0, i less than uh, 20, i plus plus. You can execute a service dot. Uh, 
executor service dot submit um, task submitted now we can simply just execute this one okay local variable cannot be referenced mm, final i final i equals to i shit 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 yeah so let's see the error what it's getting like variable user lambda action should be final or effectively final let's declare a final and now let's start for a better simplicity we can also give the thread name uh, thread dot uh, uh, get name right sorry thread dot uh, uh, name current thread dot uh, name right get name so let's have uh, uh, okay let's have only five let's have 10, 20 jobs for submitting parallelly so let's see we have we are submitting a job of three we'll taking a by four and zero taking care by one two taking care by three so if you see never basically increasing the threads more than a five because we have defined the thread pools as only five right that's the beauty like of having the fixed thread pools and managing with the help of a fixed threads try to manage all the jobs that is how fixed thread pool will basically works um now let's see the another one maybe something like uh, um cache thread pool cache thread pool so if you go into the cache thread pool right uh, where is it so it is basically initially uh, uh, core pool size is zero and time units is basically seconds it is synchronous queue it is this is how constructor basically defining when comes to uh, fixed thread pool, it's passing the number of threads. Uh, nothing but core pool size and maximum pool size, right? They're passing whatever you are passing threads, right? But when comes to this uh, cache thread pool, here it is passing the uh, zero core pool size and also maximum pool size, basically integer dot max value. That means it will take the all the uh, available threads. But it will not use the threads, all the available threads, depending on how frequently we use the threads, it will, it will try to cache it. So whatever we are performing this operation, we can do same exact operation inside here also. Just replacing this cache with executor service cache, it will work. So let's see here, compare. so here we see right, with the help of five operations only, with the help of five threads, it will try to perform. Now let's see here in the executor, uh, um, okay, this is fixed thread pool, right? Let's uh, define here uh, uh, new single uh, right new single thread pool executor. Uh, okay, this is for that one. Uh, let's have this cache. Okay, now let's execute this one. If you execute this one, let's see how many threads actually it is trying to use uh, for performing these twenty jobs. So with the help of fixed thread pool, we have using only five five things only. But the help of fix a uh, new cache thread pool. One, uh, two, uh, three, up to twenty. Yeah, we are using all the twenty threads here. So maybe uh, for a hundred. Uh, so so depend. For example, uh, if uh, if uh, okay, let's uh, do let's do some simulation also. Thread dot sleep uh, uh, thousand. Yeah. Now let's run. Yeah. 
एग्जीक्यूटिव सर्विस डॉट शट डाउन ओके वे वे आर पासिंग हंड्रेड राइट है दैट्स वाई अरे आई डॉट सम मिस्टेक या कुल का हाई आई थिंक हियर आल्सो इट यूजेस हंड्रेड या हंड्रेड आल्सो because uh, i it's uh, it's it is internally uh, maintained by the uh, uh, executive service only for example create a thread pool that creates a new threads as needed but we'll reuse the previously constructed threads when they are available so while running these threads it seems that uh, uh, the existing threads are not available that's why it's created 100 but if existing threads are completed uh, if it is required it will basically reuse that's the advantage of having a new fixed thread uh, cache thread pool um See, threads will not have been used for 60 seconds. Are terminated and removed from the cache. The pool that remains ideal for long enough will will not consume any resources. Uh, so note this that that uh, pool will similar properties but different uh, details. So this is the extra thing when it comes to cache that pool, right? So there are some kind of threads will basically cache it for uh, in order to create a th threads uh, uh, every time whenever submitting the task. So whenever it's required, we'll basically reusing the same threads which are present in the cache. If a thread is basically ideal for more than sixty minutes, it will basically come out from the it basically removed uh, from that uh, cache, uh, and the current values basically serve the cache leg. So we can simulate that one, but we can still need to wait wait almost a uh, sixty uh, seconds uh, to do that one operation. But this is how basically cache that pool, and we and I think we have many such uh, executor uh, classes are there. One such basically schedule. Uh, executor service pool basically see new schedule that pool right so here will be if it is schedule that pool so basically uh, how frequently we should basically set so here if you see uh, new schedule that pool executor so uh, every milliseconds it will try to keep on uh, it's a, it's a, see it's basically delay working queue right which means every every couple of milliseconds uh, it will try to uh, uh, what it will try to keep on uh, uh execute the same job repeated repeatedly that's nothing but a uh, schedule executor schedule uh, thread pool executor for example if you want to run a job every day uh, you can you can set like if you want to run a job every minute or every couple of seconds you can basically set uh, yeah this is how you can basically uh, uh work with uh, um different executor uh, um different uh, ways of creating an executor service and work up on that so i think uh, that's it for this video uh, um uh in the next video we'll see the another most important advanced concept over executor service called fork and join pool uh how what is the advantage and disadvantage of executor service uh how we basically use the fork and join uh, which will provides the better uh, uh, concurrency better uh, uh, submission of jobs so if you like the video please share and subscribe